Hello and welcome to my basic tutorial for Python 3 on the while loop. The while loop is used to perform an operation while a condition is whatever you set, right? So the while loop is very much like the next loop, the for loop, uh, and they're interchangeable. Uh, so it really just comes down to personal preference. Uh, so let's go ahead and show an example. So now what I want to say is let's just say to make things you know super simple, we'll say condition equals one. So we're condition is a variable and we're assigning the value of one to the condition. Uh, the next thing we're going to say is wow, condition is less than ten. So we're actually using something called an assignment operator. We will talk a little bit more on those. Uh, in probably a couple videos, but for now this should make total sense to you. You should be able to read this and be like, okay, that makes sense. Um, so while the condition is less than 10, what do we want to do? Well, for now, let's just print whatever the condition is. And now we're, now we're going to use another uh, thing that I was trying to show you guys earlier, but for whatever reason it yelled at me. And we're going to do condition plus equals one and what plus equals does is it takes that variable and adds one to it so plus equals you might be thinking well why didn't you just do condition plus one why not that well the reason why you don't do that is condition plus one will just yield a value but it won't actually assign that value to anything so condition plus equals one is really the only thing that's equal to con or, or would do the same operation as plus equals would be condition equals condition plus one. Now, as you can see, uh, this is a much shorter way to do that. Uh, but that this is what it's doing. It's just taking the previous value and adding one to it. So we'll do that. So while it's less than 10, it's going to add one to it. And then obviously, eventually, it's going to get to the point where it's no longer less than 10 and this while loop will stop or break. So let's save and run that one. And as we can see, we ran all the way through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and stop. So as you can see, when it did become 10, it didn't run because 10 is not less than 10. So, um, so that's one of the neat things you can do. Now, the other thing, uh, probably the most common use for me uh, with the while loop is the following. So um, I actually prefer the next loop that I'll be showing you guys more, but while does have a nice little thing for it, and that is called the while true loop. And what's nice about this is it makes what's known as an infinite loop. Now sometimes uh, the infinite loop is uh, something that you don't want, but other times the infinite loop is something you do want. So in order to make your own little infinite loop, you can do while true. And true basically uh, means this will always run because while true is true, it runs. And it's just like this. Like So when you look at while, wow, it's almost like an if statement is being thrown in here. And I'll teach you guys about if statements soon. But condition less than 10, basically it's asking, is that true or false? Is that true or false? Every time through. And as soon as it's false, it stops running. So that's why when you just throw true in here, true is like a... Uh, a boolean so to speak in programming terms uh, and it's like you know zero or one and so you can use true and it'll do stuff now I haven't showed you guys the time module yet so this is really gonna go quite crazy it's gonna print doing stuff as fast as it can so uh, I will warn you guys beforehand I'm sure some of you guys have already run the script out of it just sheer excitement and now you're probably like oh my gosh what do I do well what you can do at this point is to break this infinite loop or any running script, you can do control, hold control, and press C, and that will break the script. So let's go ahead and run this bad boy. So we'll run it, save it, run it, boom. And it's just like going crazy printing stuff, right? It's just So to break it, control, C, and it might take a second because I let it go for a while, so it probably has quite the cue. Uh, yes, it is going for a while. I shouldn't have uh, talked so much. There it goes, finally, man, anyway. <laughs> So if it doesn't happen initially uh, for you, it's just because it had so many, you know, that it got behind. Because the, this little console here is pretty slow. If you did the same thing, like in an actual, you know, you executed the script, uh, Control-C usually is, is instantaneous, pretty much. 
So anyways, that's the wow loop. Hopefully you guys understand uh, the idea here. Um, and in the next tutorial, what we're going to cover is the for loop. Typically, uh, the wow loop is most used as a form of counter, right? So it's just, it's there to count something. Uh, that's where I honestly see it used the most. But actually, the for loop and the while wow loop uh, can be completely interchangeable. So the while wow loop can do what a for loop does and uh, a for loop can do what a while wow loop does. It just comes down to preference. I tend to like the for loop better, but it really doesn't matter. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing in the next video is the for loop. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something new. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the tutorials. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.